Are we ready? Good evening, everyone. It's my honor to welcome you all in the second edition of Orange City Literature Fest, organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation. I, Himanshi Kandhari, will be the anchor for this session, and the topic of this session is International Indian Culinary, which is of 40 minutes. Sir, you will get a buzzer sound after 30 minutes of session to sum up the session. The guest for this session is Chef Manjeet Sengil. He is a highly acclaimed chef with over four decades of excellence in the culinary profession. Lifetime, Lifetime Achievement Award from India's Ministry of Tourism in January 2006. He is he, uh, World Punjabi Organization presented the Punjabi Gold Award for invaluable contribution to Punjabi community on Baisakhi, April 24, April 14, 2007. He was also awarded as the prestigious Paryatan Ratan by Punjab University in March 2016. Ravi Mishra sir will be the moderator for this session. Sir has been awarded as best publication, best publication professional by management guru Shiv Khera. He's a brand ambassador for brands like Lotto Shoes, DNN Jeans. He is the owner of famous brand Iron Dino, food manufacturing unit of pasta and noodles. His current status is as dean at GH Raisuni School of Hospitality Management. He's a member of Indian Federation of Culinary Association, Young Chef Association of India, and World Association of Chef Society. He is selected in Team India to represent a country for World Chef Congress 2020 to be held at St. Petersburg, Russia. Handing the session to you, Ravi, sir. Uh, thank you, Himanshi, for such a wonderful uh, introduction and welcome. And I uh, honor, and uh, it is an honor to welcome Chef Manjeet Singh Gill in the Rai Soni family and the Orange City Literature family. It is highly, highly honor, Chef, uh, being uh, uh, you are a part of this literature fest. Thanks for your wonderful time and uh, support, uh, uh, Chef. बहुत अच्छा लगा आप हमारे साथ जुड़े and since whenever I was trying to catch up, uh, and this time, finally, uh, though it's in virtual, uh, but again, uh, finally, you are there with us. So, uh, Chef, uh, kindly uh, just put on, put on the uh, light how and how far our Indian um, culinary has uh, recognized internationally, Chef. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Ravi and the Manchi, uh, introducing me also, and uh, very you know, kind words. Uh, you see, your topic is that, you know, how to reach to the international platform. You know, we have yes. to understand the Indian food. We have to understand the food. You know, not the Indian food, but the food, we can say. And because I am saying the food, uh, the knowledge of food, the science of food, which India has done so much of work. Our ancestors, our you know people in the ancient time, they are the only one you know the science is developed, and which is so called Ayurveda at this time. And you know Ayurveda, which is the life, which is the science of the life, and food is one of the chapter in that. You know we should not feel Ayurveda is only food or Ayurveda is only a healing science or Ayurveda like these days is a very badly uh, use word for massages and all that, but food is one of the very main chapter in the Ayurveda, and that I think we have to understand as a science now. And a lot of scientific, I think now there are a lot of empirical data is also available, uh, you know, which is the base of Ayurvedic science and all that. And we as Indians, because we are born here, we are we are lucky that we born in this country. Where the food is so much of, uh, you know, it's a subject of literature. And I'm very happy that it is put into this kind of a format because this is where somewhere we are not able to understand the food. We only 
what till now we only talk and we only know about the cookery part, cooking the food, few recipes, and then we say it's Indian food. Indian food is a philosophy. Indian food is not cookery. Cookery is the one of the ultimate result of the knowledge, skills you have and the products you have, and you do it in a pan and you serve it a plate. But the part before the cookery, somewhere in India, we are missing it and we have it. It is not that we are missing and we have to develop it. No, it's there, it's documented, but we don't talk about that. And that is what my experience internationally also, nationally also, when we do the demonstration of the food to the people, people have many, many questions to ask. To, they don't talk so much about the recipe, but they ask on that because they have more questions to ask because somewhere we feel we, because of ignorance that our food is not standardized. So then we start asking the question. We say, no, oh, you make differently, other person differently, but that's what our food. That's the diversity of our food. That is the strength of our food. And because the cause of that, people have many questions to ask. But even so much diverse food it is, we still say it's Indian food. Or it's a food from Bharat Pradesh, or it's food from Indian subcontinent. We still say that. And when we say it's very diverse food, it's different. It changes every few kilometers. It changes, you know, in the every region. We have many reasons, but we don't talk about what unifies this food? What is above this cookery? That this food is unified. And then we, because of that, we say it's an Indian food. And with my experience and my understanding of this, it is the size which is universal. It is not that Indian food. Even the even in today's world, if you what people are talking now, and if you cook even the German food, as per guidelines of Ayurveda, you know, that food will become even better. Because the science is applied into that. I will not say this with that regard Indian food. Like we also have a regional foods, you know, different communities, we name them. We don't say Indian, we have a Tamil food, Punjabi food, this food, like that in all over the world. But still we call it an Indian food because it all falls under the same philosophy, same guidelines, same principle. You know? So that's what, that's what we have to understand. That's what we have to disseminate that knowledge to the people, the whole world. And I'm, 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 I believe that we will become, we will be the, you know, it's like a superpower of the knowledge of gastronomy. But we don't talk about that. We don't study about that. So I will, I'll go through, you know, I'll look the food in a different way of what the way, the way India has looked at food. Not the cookery part. Cookery part is very individual. So, I will do. so you know, the, uh, and this is all whatever I'll read and whatever I'll tell you is all from my brain. It's written there. I have not written anything. Just pick them from the different words. Like food is vital to our lives. Man is born of food, nourished by food, and also becomes food for other creations. In our culture, the food is visible manifestation of the God. Be it a deity, the Quran, the Granth Sahib, the Bible. Saints and the wise men have for many centuries now been tending to them, adoring them, worshipping them. With the same audacious faith, we also tend to decorate and worship our food. Food is revered. Worship, when we see food, we see the divine in it. And thinking of food is very different. Better draws energy from food and become alive, gets nourished and then grows, grows. Rasa, the juice of food, converts into Ratna, the juice of life, 
to control the seed of tomorrow to propagate life. Our Upanishads have arranged the circle or cycle of life in the microsystem, macrosystem of the universe. If we understand a little bit of this, then the, how the food is affecting the next generation will not come into the fads, will not come into creation of food or discovery of dishes or create the dishes without thinking. You have to use your mind when you create any dish. It might have a bad effect if you don't understand. If you don't believe that how it will affect the next generation. So food is a very deep philosophy, very deep thinking that you have to do it. You know, the earth gives us life for plantation, for vegetation, and other, it's other life forms. Water creates souls of the earth. Sun evaporates moisture to bring clouds of rain. The wind crackles with the lightning and the fire, and space offers its expense, expense to survey of the air. So, you know, where I come to know, come to where our food has come into, this, that uh, the, it is the five elements we all know, the basic five elements. Now, one might think that what we have to do with the five elements. But the thing is that, you know, the food is formed, like our body is formed of five elements. The other thing, the food is formed of five elements. So, you know, this is, we have to understand, we have to go back absolutely to the uh, basic, how this universe, how this life has formed into this, uh, you know, and then today we are, surviving. And you know these, like, we had, uh, uh, I mean, then, then you know, the, all these things have started from discovery of the fire. And discovery of the fire only started cooking the food. And that is the only difference between the rest of the animal kingdom. And we are different than we cook food, the rest all eat and cook food. And there's a difference between them and us. And all this started when the fire was created. And that is why there is a very nice uh, verse in uh, Rig Veda. This is the first verse in the Rig Veda. The Veda started from this verse. And that is Agni Milay Prohetum, Dulsana Devan Rituam Patram, Ratna Dantram. The verse means, O oh, Agni, you who gleam in the darkness to you, we come day by day with devotion and bearing homage. So be of easy access to us as father to his son, abide with us for all well-being. So the cooking has become a very important factor in our life. You know, and Agni, like Agni is the fire is the starting point of cooking. The Vedas acknowledge the value of Agni in the well-being of mankind. We must understand its role in evolution of man in context of food since the Stone Age and how it is responsible for our existence. In the most uh, time when people did not even know how to cover their bodies and all that, but we have, you know, attained this highly civilization of this science. They have universe, universal philosophy in the form of Vedas, you know, from the ancient time. And with the with fire began this cooking, as I said before, you know, as man realized that fire, Agni, was required to digest the food. You know, in a digestive system. Fire helps to cook food, improve ingestion, and makes the food easily digestible. Fire enhances absorption and makes metabolism more efficient. The nutrients absorbed from the food provide the energy needed by the body and help in improving the immune system, which helps the organ function properly. The development of the brain occurs in completely in this fashion. So, it was slowly the time we also began to understand that the food not 
just nourish the body, but also the mind, which in turn leads to evolution through development of culture, language, and knowledge. Agni also referred to our digestive fire. It is written in the Vedas that as long as our digestive fire are strong, we won't fall sick. Indian cuisine has evolved on the basis of traditional wisdom, which is our rich cultural heritage. It is important to follow the path on this well to our coming generation, especially in current times when practical everybody, everyday aspects of are under a threat of getting lost and the mankind is facing such a big pandemic. Indian gastronomic science is based on two verticals. Our food has evolved on two verticals, and this I'm telling in the ancient time. Before, since we have the Ayurvedic history and all that. And that is, those two verticals are, um, one is wellness, the other is sustainability. And we wonder that today also these are the major subjects. We have the science behind it. We have to only discover, we have to put it on and disseminate this knowledge of this science. Now, Indian astronomic science uh, from the Ayurveda, as I said, is the, well, the two verticals. One is this wellness and the sustainability. Now, the let us know closely understand these two verticals of Indian gastronomy. And the vertical of wellness, food is only source, the only source that serves the nutritional needs of the body. And from the ancient time, Ayurveda has been promoting wellness and continuously influence our present day philosophy of gastronomy. Ayurveda, Indian ancient system accords uh, accords utmost importance of to food and according to it food is the medicine what you eat and how you eat has everything to do with how you feel is very important that how you feel it was true to the olden times in medieval time even even today and even the future they know it will be relevant now, beginning to its place, the dietary you know, trends of the day, according to Charles Saiza, this is the time to stay at home, like this time kind of a thing. So you stay at home and eat food what you cook yourself. And the sustainability is a very major factor. The Ayurveda always suggested the food is only if it is sustainable with the nature. If, if you do something and create a food and it's not that it's not sustainable to nature, like we have seen the animal farming in the Western world and all that, it is all have now to come you know, back to us. And this is what Ayurveda says also, that it's, uh, if the environment around us is as important as taking care of our individual health or our body, mind and soul, Simply because our individual balance is contributed by the balance of the environment around us. If we don't keep that balance, it will disturb our balance also. It is simple as this. Every time we contaminate our surroundings on the environment, we end up con uh, con uh, contaminating ourselves. It is usually taught in Naraveda that whenever you throw something outside, assuming it to be a waste, the rest is showed it will always come back to you if it is in the form of harmful fumes will bring them, them bring them back. So we must see when we clean the food or we uh, you know deal with the food, whatever we're doing. It is difficult to cook something. Any cuisine is very difficult because the cuisine is a cultural issue. It is not a cookery. No, let's come out of the cookery. It's a cultural issue, and you cannot cook any other food unless the food in reality for the goodness if we don't understand the philosophy of that cuisine. It's very important. So 
Indian in, in India, the food is a philosophy. We have to understand that. Then we should get into the pan and do the cooking. And, and it's very difficult to explain the whole philosophy and the whole habit of the science in a, in a very short time. But there are a few things I will touch on this. And then we'll see what we should understand and how important the nature that we are together, you know, how important is it, how much we can go against the nature, that we will understand a little bit. I'll tell, tell you that. that the life is duration of the time, we constant instant flow of energy and material happens through a form. For the first nine months of our life, a mother fed us in a womb, and then we are born, and since then, we eat, drink, breathe, and perceive the world around us every day. So food is around us all the time. So entire information of food, water, air, and everything else has been following, flowing through our body. Indian gastronomy goes beyond rules to discover and underline gastrosomantic, which can be understood as a culture distinct capacity of signifies experience, systematize, philosophize, and communicate with food and food practices, rendering it as a general subject of attention. Our body deeply grounded, our food is deeply grounded with five elements of nature, five senses, three strands, three humors, Six days and nine feelings. And food is, you know, understand all these things and how food changes with all these things. You know, depends on this. That's why we are so much more diverse and how we don't we don't work on standardized recipes and all that. Because we are, you know, left open and creative on these things. So and we all know you eat what you are and you are what you eat. Is a phrase from the Bhagavad Gita, I think it's in chapter 17. And it is so true, and the people have now started believing it. Now, as we said about the five elements, I'll try to connect those five elements with the food, which we will understand how you know important they are. Now, the the universe is made of these basic five elements in different proportions. These five elements are earth, water. Fire, vayu, and it, the space, or the akash. And collectively, they are termed as panch bhuta in our uh, language. Now, let us first see closely look at these five elements and understand the food around it. Our five senses have evolved in the context of natural world. Thus, our bodies are well attuned to interpret and assess the environment using the concept of these five elements. The body uses the elements to interpret and the section and determine the appropriate foods to eat, like it. Now it means the volume of space. And our body also has these five elements. And it is the volume of space, better including air. It is characterized as the non existent space and re receptivity. It is subtle, soft, light, you know, and the all body channel pores in the body, cavities in the body, empty spaces like the mouth is empty, the stomach, all these things are the part of the akash, a part of the it, the open spaces inside the body. Now, there are common ingredients, like you see the large volume, but the yield is less, you know, which are like cabbage, spinach, and all that, and they have more into the, related to the akash. Now, air, we come out to the air, it's a, it correlates with the moment of direction, moment and direction. It is light, dry, subtle food, subtle cold, and this is and substances that increase air include like caffeine and the pungent spices. Exercise, you know, when you take the pungent spices, you will experience when you understand these things and you start thinking. And 
common ingredients in the egg quality are you know the things like rice and the black tea and coffee and all those the items are there and the fire is correlated with the energy visible light and the appearance of things it is hot penetrating subtle light and bright and pungent spices also you know give the fire to the body and the body also creates the fire at which we call it agni for digestion and in this the things are like the dry and the black pepper black salt and cardamom they fall into those category and then the water water provides cohesion uh, and relationship it is fluid sticky soft it has to share with the sweetness emotion and fertility water sacrifices right and for relationship it has to share that taste buds the heart the productive organs and the fat tissue so water is very critical we all know the 70% of our body is the water so water is very very important and that helps you get through the food from the you know, the vegetables and the fruits and all that and so it's not only drinking water you have to water 70% you have to what get the water through the food and then the earth is heavy solid dense and people are grounded stable stubborn and hard it is associated with smell muscle and base of the spine and the soul so you know all these elements are very important and then you know we after the element we come on the taste now taste this there's six taste and the taste in ayurveda should be included in your diet to maintain nutritional balance of the food if this any one taste is missing from the food it means the food is not balanced so it is like in the nutrition you see the balanced food differently with the carbohydrate protein and all those things so all kind of food is important but it must be tasted it must have a well balance of taste and then every taste is a is formed out of these five elements like sweet is formed from earth and water the salty is formed from water and fire sar the katta is formed from earth and fire pungent is formed from fire and air and bitter is from earth and heat and the last the sixth taste is stringent formed from earth and air if you see now these tastes are not the after cooking the dish these tastes are of the natural form of flora and fauna and when you understand these tastes your combinations of the food become much better the taste you can create much better by less ingredient because you understand the taste of the individual food substance you know the taste now when you see the food you see from the taste point of view that how and you will feel also these things that it is it like like salt is water and fire and if you leave the salt become normally become liquid the natural form when the moisture comes in and then a little heat it will draw water it will become liquid so all these things if you keep in mind and then you start seeing them and you will see that you know how food is related nature food relationship with the nature and how nature is taken care you know to this food and then our body so our health is very very important in your food it will become easier for you to understand the food so what is the uh, best you know and the taste then uh, you can because of taste you can think when you had the best meal ever you can recall the meal you can always you know you will see you can easily think even maybe 20 30 year back that when you had the best ever meal 
If not that, you know, you can always imagine it. How? What do you what what do you see even in the food? What do you see? What do you smell? What do you taste? Of these three, four things of the food you will remember. And never food always live in the memory. Always. So you can always remember your, your, you know, on your, you know, 15th birthday, your mother or your nanny made what dishes you get. If they were outstanding, you will always they give you a lot of happiness and remember. And you like to have it again. Like, so taste is very, very important. And the taste has a strong pull for humans. That's why we say the food which we prepare should be very tasty. That will only bring the people in. Even the commercial, commercial in the restaurant, they will only come if the food is tasty. How fantastic decorations you do, whatever you do. All these things are given. Hygiene, sanitation, safety of food, things are given. You cannot run your operations without them, even at home and even commercially. But after given all these things, the food must be tasty. That will only bring the people in. So we have emotional connection to taste. And we have strong biological connection to taste as well. In Ayurveda described, digestion starts the moment food hits your mouth. Because the taste gets you everything get activated. Taste is the only thing which gives signal to the brain that what food is coming in, how it is going to be digested now. Then the brain starts working on this. That what strong or mild or whatever kind of fluids has to come into the stomach and in the digestive system to handle that food. So taste is very, very important, you know, and taste is the natural guide backwards proper nutrition. You will be through the taste, you can feel that you're getting the proper nutrition or not. Like, you must have heard that if you are sick, if your tastes are not right, you're sick. That's why sometimes when you feel sick, you, your taste starts getting disturbed. You're not able to taste the thing. So taste is very, very important. And always keep your taste buds active and good. They unlock the nutritive value of food. They provide the initial spark to the entire digestive process. So taste is very, very important. And Ayurveda categorized into six behavioral tastes, which I said the six days already. And principles stress that right combination of six days creates the balance and nutritional diet. Ooh. So in taste is not satisfactory, there would be a feeling of dissatisfaction after the meal. This would result in an emotional desire for a particular taste. We also depends on climate and personal biochemistry. Generally, the sweet taste is the most needed. Is the premier taste is the most needed. This is the taste which a, a natural taste we already developed when we born. We have seen the newly born child only accept the sweet taste you give. No other taste the child can accept. It's the natural taste. That gives us energy, that gives us calories, that gives us, you know, but everything we do moderation is a different thing. But sweet is very, very important. And it is maximum, maximum time you can have or maximum taste the sweet is required. And sour, pungent, and astringent taste are needed in moderation. Salty and bitter tastes are needed even much less important. So we have to moderate the taste. You know? And not only uh, not only in the around the year is the same. All these things become seasonal. One of the important things is the taste. Is different. And the taste in summer is different, the rain season is different, winter is different. All six tastes remain in the food. 
But normally, like we have to cover the season, there are six seasons of Torah. That time, the two months when the vegetables and fruits are in the prime quality available. That time, they are best in their taste, they are best in their flavor, they are best in their color, they are best in their texture. And easy to cook, they create tasty dish after that. So that is the normally that is what is called the seasonal food. No, but in season, because the body chemistry in body is body proportions of these five elements keep changing. Whether it is very little, but it makes a great impact. So with those elements changing, the portion of proportion changes, the taste changes. So every taste is made of two elements. Every taste is made of two elements. So those elements going up and down, your taste also goes up and down. And you, you feel, you realize, that in winter, like in winter, you like sweet more. Even more, because digestion is much better. You need more energy. You need to heat the body. So digestion is better in summer, in the peak summer, digestion is very weak. Everything is dry. Even the moisture from the earth is you know, taken out by the heat. Everything is dry in digestion. You need more water. The vegetables are very different. You make, you know, curries very different. More thinner curries are made. More thicker food is made in the winter. No, there is a difference in the food. Even in the, even the people who eat meats and the meat remains the same, even around the year, they are also, uh, the texture changes, but still to make that meat seasonal, you use seasonal vegetables or seasonal style of cooking for the meat to make them seasonal meats. So you can't have round the year one recipe. That's why we don't have standard recipes. Our recipe depends on many factors. We change the same thing, but differently because of the season. And uh, so six seasons, we have, uh, you know, in Indian gastronomy, we find six seasons also, and they influence the taste requirement of the body, as I told you, progress. And the six seasons are winter, Hemanta, in the Heman, the or that is uh, Sisra, which is cold and dew, is before the winter, that is the Vasanta, the spring, summer, the Grishma, and the rainy, Varsha, and autumn, Sarat. So there are the six seasons. So this is how we can create variations in our food, even are in the menu or even at home, so they're not eating the same thing, you know, or the same way throughout the year. That is what creating the signal. People have accepted the norm. These days, everybody says, oh, we are sick because the weather is changing. No, we are sick because according to season, we are not changing our food. The body is not able to accept that food. That, that is why, and instead, and the traditionally, we have many, many dishes. If you find in you know, guideline between these, particularly in the spring and the autumn, before going into the main season of winter and summer. So if we change the food, if we change the spices, change the, you know, the curry levels, the thickness, and all those things, you will not fall sick. You will easily translate to the main season. So we, must, we, you, we see the animals change their food habits in these particular two months, three months. And from winter to summer, we enter with the same food of winter, entering to the summer, that we have problems. So we have a relationship, and as a chef, as a cook, even whosoever cook, must have some this basic knowledge on these things, so that they can cook much better food. And you don't cook only for yourself, you cook for your loved one, or you cook for your customer if you are in a commercial world. But it doesn't make any difference whether you cook at home for two people or you cook virtually for a thousand people. You must practice this. It's very, very important. So this, these are the things which we need to, you know, uh, disseminate to the whole world before we talk about our food. We, we say our food is, you know, uh, 
5,000 year old and all that, then become a diamond food and then uh, come, start on the food. People don't understand. If we have the oldest civilization, why we have, if we older civilization, where is the knowledge, where is the science, where is the brain? If we talk about Dalai Vedas, we don't, you know, so we need all to know all these things because we all eat or we all cook and so on. And you should know all these things, simple things, for your own self. If you cook for yourself, for your own health, you should know. And it's easy to get all this information. And um, in conclusion, I will say that, you know, that the uh, many people have written about our food, you know, our own uh, people from the literature and all that. Like, I don't know how many people know about it. Uh, you know, the... These are the words of, I fell in love with cooking through my reading. And that's a little bit true with me also. I fell in love with cooking through reading. I connected deeply to the people through cooking the food and they were eating. Seemed to be a natural way to be closer to them. The sentiments is echoed by wise people in the history, latest like celebrated author named Bulkras Nagar, you all know him, as famously quoted in his cookery book. He's written one cookery book. You can only know it, I don't want to twitch, <laughs> but he has written one cookery book, okay. in, written in 1932, when he was oh, in England. And he used to cook food and you know, everybody cooked food that time you know, when you were outside. So that time he fell in love with the food. I read it in a book in 1932. I will just record a few Indian considerations about food, which might serve to show how when their remarkable genius for systematizing life and its functions, the Indians had raised cookery to the fine art. Actual word here in the Hindus have raised, but I politically I don't want to use that. So Indians had raised the cookery to a fine art. And this is going to be judged the food. Always should be, but particularly of this pandemic, it is going to be judged. People have become very particular for many things. And which one written in our way the way the food should be is what is highlighting it. Food, when you eat food, it should be judged on the basis of its nutritive quality. If in the restaurants and all that, the chefs who don't understand this, they should stop cooking. In this, number two, in respect of its flavor and taste, as judged by the palate, the palate will judge, the palate will tell you the taste, and then the rest of the thing goes. Third is, and in regard to the delight it gives to the artistic faculty of man's mind. So food should complete the thing. Food should at the end should give you tripti and the nutrition and the you know. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I'm only almost done. The last few Yes, Madri, uh, you are saying something? Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Actually, uh, uh, sir, we are running short of time I'm as the session is also lined up. So can you please sum up the session? Yeah, sure. Thank sure. You, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, this transformation of food into fine dining experience only possible to achieve if we practice the four essentials of food cooking. According to our Ayurveda, according to the Vedas, which are mentioned in that. Four essentials, I'm just saying the four essentials, and I'm over them. Number one is knowledge on the characteristics of each food substance. You must know the characteristic of the taste and the other values, other whatever characteristic that thing has, why you're using it. Number two, emotionally, you must have touch and feel with food substances. If you don't touch them, what is going to cook, you will not be able to get the right food. So just following the recipe doesn't create a good food. A good cooking creates a good recipe. Correct. 
is its reverse. So number three is the mind must be where cooking is happening. The mind should not travel. It's like a very high level of meditation. So you should concentrate when you're cooking, on cooking. And number four, the last one, the positivity and good thoughts in mind when you're planning and cooking. And these things can be practiced at every level of cooking, whether it's home or a five star hotel. When you practice them, your cooking, your food changes. Even the customers also start getting a very big, very different vibration of your food. The food becomes different. It's very spiritual also. So we must take, understand these things, there are many other things which can be shared, you know, and uh, then we can come on to the cookery and start doing the demonstration to the people also. So while the demonstration, we can tell them a lot of things about the, that's what the knowledge we are going to disseminate and the whole world, will transcend into the world. And that's when we, then we'll reach to the international level and the top level, you know, and, when, and once we'll reach there with this knowledge, will never come down. So the cuisines are not supported by this knowledge. Thank you very much. Any questions you have? Uh, thank you so very much, Chef. Uh, Himadri, is there any uh, question in the chat box? Just check. Uh, no, sir. We uh, don't have any questions. I checked it out. All right. OK. So, uh, you said questions right to me, I'll answer. Yeah, Chef. I just, uh, you were said very well that uh, our uh, Ayurveda, uh, as Indian is a so very blessed country, so have so many Ayurvedas. And again, it is connected to our food and the nature and the solar system. This was very new to me. Again, I am in the uh, hospitality industries, but again, it's uh, very new to me that I have come to know that our food is related to nature and the solar system. It was so informative session, uh, Chef. It comes from you only, nothing else. So uh, thank you so much, Chef. Thanks for your wonderful session. Thanks for your wonderful time, though, you have given to our uh, Raisoni uh, Institute and the Orange City Literature Fest. I uh, hope we will be joining very soon for the third edition. And before that, uh, I will be connecting you for my uh, hospitality uh, uh, management as a lecture uh, chef. I would like to uh, thanks to Himati. Yeah, thank you very much, Himati. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. I'm handing over to yes, Himati. It's all yours now. Thank you so much, sir, for the amazing session. On behalf of Orangery Literature Fest, organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation, I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our guest, Chef Manjeet Singhel, sir, and moderator Ravi Mishra, sir. We sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for the session and knowledge shared with us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Chef. Thank you so very much. Thanks a lot. Have a nice evening. 20 years of existence, two universities, 23 educational institutes, offering 137 courses, Raisoni Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.